Now, you may recognise our next guest for some incredible roles, such as Spike in Notting Hill, Jed Parry in Enduring Love, and Eyeball Paul in Kevin and Perry Go Large. Or you may know him as a member of the Super Fairy Animals or the Pair. It's the one and only Welsh actor and musician that is Rhys Evans. Rhys, thank you so much for coming in on The Crunch. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? Oh, yeah. Great you to right? see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, bit of a shock <laughs> being here. <laughs> Well, for us, more so, I think. Yeah, no, I was on my way to the train station and then um, <laughs> I just saw you on the street. They so, just, yeah, they just found you on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just popped yeah. in, like. So, actually, you have been very busy today in Cardiff. Now, I, I, I did see earlier today that you were doing a QA yeah. for Interfilm. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I did that this morning at um, a school plus mouth yeah, yeah, in, uh, yeah. in Fairwater. Yeah, Fairwater, yeah. We'll go and, with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it, it was a uh, yeah, early start this morning. It was amazing. Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't been to school for. <laughs> many many years so it was really cool just going to school again and uh, you know just feeling that kind of atmosphere and yeah a hall full of uh, young people from all over South Wales who were interested in film and it was there in aid you know of uh, inter inter film <coughs> which is a um, um, uh, a company or a charity that that promotes um, um, the use of film as a learning tool in schools um, I think there's mo <coughs> over 200 film clubs <coughs> in Wales um, where um, young kids and young people um, watch films and discuss them and review them and um, and make them sometimes um, and, and it's just a fantastic um, enterprise really and um, I was really kind of taken aback by how uh, knowledgeable um, you know these 200 young people were today are knowledgeable and passionate about uh, about film so the future looks really bright i was almost hoping at the end of the day that in you know 10 years time some of them might even be employing me so uh, <laughs> who knows we'll yeah they, they, they were all every single one of them really really inspiring so um yeah I'm trying to gotta say I, I, I can see your face, Reese, when they did, said, "Right, <coughs> we're now going to show you some some bits of your career," and you had to watch the footage of yourself on the screen. Yeah, not nice. It's now the most Do you comfortable. Still hate that? It's, it's horrible. It's it's horrible. I still look. I mean, I, I no, I just can't. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, Reese, we particularly need... some of the roles I've played. You know, not not the most kind of uh, desirable characters. <laughs> you, say, you know, so uh, yeah. But I mean, we we named uh, some of the characters that you have played on. Obviously, there are, there are plenty more. What is it that you have taken from your experience in film? What have you learnt most about being a film? Well, I mean, you know, the creative aspect aside, you know, of course, there's a there's a plethora of things that you that you bring away from that. But for me, the the, the most um, enduring and and affecting part of working on a film is is the community you work in, and that you know that you you walk on a film set and there's you know any number of up to 20 different departments who are all at the top of their game working diligently um, at what they do be that a camera department makeup design uh, special effects stunts um, uh, pyrotechnics you know um, you, you, I mean you, the list is, is endless you know and then you know throughout the day or the morning all these little departments will be working in isolation and slowly but surely they all gather and collect and um, get round the one moment of when uh, the director says action and then there's this almost kind of holy silence you know um, <laughs> and in those few minutes where the actors perform you know something really special there's a real special atmosphere and um, I, I just always love that I just lo love being surrounded by people who are just passionate at what they do re re regardless of what that is you know um, and it's a really kind of um, life-affirming place to be, you know. Um, so th that's the most enduring thing for me. I think it makes you ultimately, hopefully, um, a better human being. Because you, you had some great questions at the Q&A today, funny enough, talking about those experiences that you had. Yeah. Um, now, the, w w tell me the anecdote that you were talking about uh, when you were working on uh, Mr. Nice. Yes. Because that went down quite well, as I remember today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, you know, Howard and I um, had been friends for many, many, many years before um, before we made um, Mr. Nice. So, you know, we'd 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 hang out a lot. You know, we had um, you know some interesting times. We had some fantastic yeah. times, some memorable, some I've just clean forgotten. <laughs> where, they, where they were probably the best ones. Um, yeah. Anyway, I was in um, I was in. Um, Alicante in Spain filming Mr. Nice 
Um, and then st as soon as I finished Mr. Nice, I was going on to shoot um, Harry Potter in London, where I was where I played a guy called Xenophilius Lovegood, who's a kind of wizard, if I remember rightly. Um, so Howard was with us in Alicante. He'd come out for a jolly, and um, and we were all staying in this hotel, and we'd been, um, you know, enjoying ourselves, um, partying hard <laughs> and working hard, you know. Uh, and anyway, the, the Harry Potter um, costume people flew in, you know, because there was a big film and they had all this money. So they, they, they jetted into Alicante to, um, to um, try my, my Harry Potter costume on, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, like a big kind of tunic number with, you know, the, the long <laughs> sleeves and, you know, a few stars and a f pointy hat. And, um, and they actually brought the wand out as well so I could have a test of the wand. <laughs> So, um, so I'm standing in my bedroom, and my bedroom door is open like this, right? So I'm standing there in full wizard regalia, you know, with a hat and everything yeah. else. And then Howard walked past the bedroom and went, I never wore anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say to him, no, Howard, no, no. These people, these, these are Harry Potter, these are people from Harry Potter. And of course, Howard had been to jail for, you know, many, many years. So Harry Potter was, was kind of a new thing for him. Yeah. <laughs> So you went, Harry Potter, and you went, all oh, right. You went, oh, hello, I'm Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Hello, oh. you've joined us back on The Grinch. Like Reece Evans <laughs> <Rachel. laughs> Reece is still here. We're going to be chatting to him in a minute. I want to talk about Spike. Surely yeah. you get a lot of uh, pants. Does anyone ever ask you about your uh, nice film books? No, well, still, the thing is, the thing is with, uh, what's happened with the, with the underpants situation is um, <laughs> there, there are several pants now that claim to be my my Just knick floating around. My knickers, yeah. <laughs> They're not, you know, there was only one bit, I don't know where they are, but a lot of it, a friend of mine a while back, um, who shall remain nameless, because it's probably illegal what he did, <laughs> got, got me to sign about 40 pairs of pants, you know, which then he proceeded to try and sell to various establishments across <laughs> South Wales, okay. say, saying they were the original. But I don't know what happened to but the real ones. When you, when you were doing Not In Home, when you were shooting it, you can't have imagined like how much how, the success it would have had afterwards. I mean, for you, was it just like this is just another film, it's another job? No, well, I mean, you know, I knew it was because they'd done four weddings and a funeral beforehand, and um, that was a huge success. So I, you know, it was like a, it was, it was. I knew it was kind of a big film, but I didn't really understand, you know, understand how massive it would be. And at the time, it was the kind of biggest selling comedy of all time, mm. you know. So it, it kind of went out of control. A little bit and I, I wasn't at all prepared for that you know I didn't actually realize that my part in the film was as big as it turned out to be in the film you know um, but you know the directors and the editors in the studio seemed to love Spike so much they kind of really used everything I did pretty much you know and, I, and even little add-ons and what have you so yeah my, my, my world changed quite dramatically after that without me really letting it letting it sink in, you know, and it kind of dawned on me when, maybe you know, a few months later, I was in Brazil or South Africa or you know, and then I went to India at some point, and there was like, you know, lepers knew who I was in India. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Wow. It was like kind of, a, yeah, and in America, you know, so it was like kind of this weird feeling that I'd never had before, where people in a foreign country where you expect to be completely and utterly anonymous know who you are. <coughs> um, it, 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 it's, it's pleasant and deeply paranoid making in equal measure um, but of course by now it's something hopefully I've, I've come to terms with but um, you know it's not up there with the greatest experiences in life I have no. to say um, Now I think next we should talk about Twin Town <coughs> amazing yeah. uh, 20, 20, year, 20 anniversary? It is 20 yeah. years this year isn't it? Year. Yeah. yeah well I think they have just recently um, which I unfortunately couldn't go to had a a celebration in Swansea, actually, um, a, a screening, an open air screening of it, and with a great turnout. And we did see um, your message. I mean, of all, of all <laughs> yeah. the film, oh, you saw that. We did oh, see we your did. message. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we can't, play, can't play that right now. No, uh. Um, but uh, you know, I, you know, it's still of, of all the films I've ever done, it's the one that's closest to my heart. You know, for the obvious reasons that it was shot in Wales um, with a Welsh crew and a Welsh cast and a Welsh director and a Welsh writer. It was like you know a made in Wales uh, product, you know, uh, the likes of which has, n you know, never uh, been seen since, you know, so I'm really proud of it and, you know, to this day, you know, you can see whole whole families across Wales will sit around the table and reenact scenes, you know, and it's, it's always quite 
you know, I don't know, he puts a smile on my face when you see a four-year-old boy <laughs> saying some of the lines <laughs> I, had, I had to I say. Imagine, yeah. But it happened, you know, and I think, you know, it's, it's one of those films that really kind of got under our skin as a nation and stayed with us. And, um, yeah, I'm really, really proud to be part of it. And hopefully, you know, there'll be another one at some, some point. We, would we you, do you know about Tin Town. <coughs> well, I mean, would you, would you want to be part of that? Oh, well, absolutely. Um, uh, hopefully I will be. You know, I mean, there was, there was um, all good intentions to shoot it um, this year, this summer, but there was a slight delay. I think it was, um, there's um, a new um, kind of, uh, whatever you call them, herd of um, beavers in that have been introduced to West Wales just outside Llanelli. Big, these are big, big hairy beavers and um, they've... Um <laughs> <laughs> Do go on Rhys! <laughs> so where I was like, big hairy beavers, uh, West Wales, yeah so basically what these, what these beavers have done is we were going to film in a little valley and the beavers went ahead and built a dam and the dam's burst and it's flooded our set. I did not um, think so that would be the reason. No, I mean, I think it's probably the first film that's been delayed because of, of, of too much beaver. Um. <laughs> that's a great story. It's a great yeah. story. Well, it's true. Um, another good story. So hopefully next year, you know, we, 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 you know we'll, have, we'll have dealt with the situation. We'll yeah. Have, we'll have settled. <laughs> no more beavers. Yeah. Um, so another good story that, that a little birdie has told us is that apparently you've uh, had a snog with Daniel Craig. Is this true that you were the first ever Bond girl? Well, no. I was, oh, I, yeah, tell us yeah, more. Well, I, I was paid to do it, obviously, <laughs> you know, and so was he. You know, no, it was a film called Enduring Love, which I did many years ago, um, uh, an Ian McEwan film, and at the end of the film I play his stalker, and at the end of the film I had to kill his wife, played by Samantha Morton, and then, um, and then I have to basically kiss him, and um, it was very uncomfortable for, <laughs> bo for, bo for both of us. Um, yeah. My story <laughs> for uh, Christmas, though, and you know, yeah, tell the family. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had, yeah. had my tongue in a, some one of the licenses to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people can say that, though. No, no. <laughs> so, so what about the future, Henry? So you, you've got a lot of uh, projects coming up, new films you're working on? No, I'm, 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 I'm heading back to London tonight because I'm living there at the moment and I'm, I'm rehearsing um, A Christmas Carol. Charles Dickens is A Christmas Carol. You're playing Scrooge, aren't you? And I'm playing Scrooge. Wow. I was, I I was, I would, I'd like to think there was another ten years till I was old enough <laughs> to play that. So maybe, Loads of makeup. maybe Loads they're of makeup. desperate or I'm versatile. <laughs> I don't know what the, what the answer to that is. But um, yeah, so th I'm really excited to be doing that. It's a new adaptation by Jack Thorne who just wrote the, the Harry Potter show that's on in the West End at the moment and he wrote some, I think some Star Wars scripts as well. He's an, uh, an incredible writer and it's Matthew Walkers who directed another great Welsh film called Pride. Um, he runs the Old Vic Theatre in London so it's on. If you're from Wales or Cardiff and you're coming to London to see the show please come. The kids are um, 11 plus because it's quite scary in bits. And if you're from Wales, come to stage door after and um, I'll properly say hello. Yeah. Oh, Amazing. lovely. Really what an nice. invite. How about yeah. that? <laughs> lovely. Reese, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Oh, Thank no, you nice so, so oh, much. Oh, do you know what? My, what time is it, man? Have you got to get a train? No, my trains. I'm going to miss. No, I won't miss it. I've got to go. Right. He's going to have to go. He's yeah. got to get a train. Uh, thank, thank you very you much. So much. Uh, Thank you very much. Happy Christmas. Oh, uh, see happy you Christmas. Yeah. He said that. I'm so <laughs> happy. <laughs>